We often interchange the words sympathy and empathy, but should we? My next guest says the gap between sympathy and empathy may be bigger than we think. Studio 5 contributor Dr. Liz Hale is joining me, and there has been some significant research on this, yes. kind of defining that difference. <laughs> it all came from this darling researcher at the University of Houston. And she went on and did a TED Talk about her research on empathy versus sympathy and shame. Dr. Brene Brown. Brene Brown. Yep, yep, yep. She's a household name now. We know her, yes. Her TED Talk has been viewed over 33 million times. Wow. Yep, yep. She's a good friend of Oprah Winfrey's now. They've there you go. They've done many interviews together. But it was really fascinating to hear the difference in her quantitative research. Why do you think it resonated so deeply with people before we get into the research? Right, and I said quantitative. I really meant qualitative. You know, she talks about the difference, and usually we just lump them together, yeah. right? And yet there's a significant difference. And if we really are interested in connection, we got to know all about empathy. If we want to connect deeper in our relationship. Yep. So let's start there. An empathetic let's person yeah. looks like what? Who is this in your yeah, mind? You know, first and foremost, it's someone who's willing to put themselves in that other person's shoes. They're willing to say, oh my gosh, I have been there. I know exactly kind of what you're thinking. Or it's a me too attitude a little bit anyway, without going into your story, right? They're good listeners. Yes. And something else that the empathic person is, is just they're, they're willing to just be there with you. You know, instead of, it's, it's an opportunity of equalization. It's not, I'm here and you're here. I'm the healer and you're the wounded, for instance. Ah. And that's a little bit what sympathy is. They, so an empathetic person meets you there, kind of yes. meets you at that moment. They provide a space for you. So let's define sympathy then. Obviously what mm -hmm. we're maybe not aspiring to anymore, but what does right. a sympathetic person look like? Sympathy is, let, let's just talk about what the words would be. It's like, oh, you poor dear, you know? You poor dear. Or the classic one we often use in Utah is... Um, Oh, bless your heart. Bless your heart. <laughs> bless your heart. So there's no joining. There's no equalization. It's uh, I might be here as a healer. You're down there as the wounded bird, right? So there is not that connection. And you Empathy say, in fact, is go connection. ahead. Empathy is connection. Empathy is connection. I and was sympathy is disconnection. That's what surprised me. I was just yes. going to say, that surprised me to see disconnection on the list of sympathy, that it actually, in the long run, could pull you apart from this person it, unintentionally. It is separation. You're so right. Separation. Yeah. So as we dive deeper into that empathetic heart, that yeah. empathetic yes. soul, you see there are some standout mm -hmm. characteristics, and the first is connection. This, yeah. this person is a connector at heart. Boy, that, that is a really powerful word these days. You'll see it everywhere, actually, I've, I've noticed. And, you know, I, I had a chance to look at this in my own life recently. I, a very dear friend of over 30 plus years, texted me early one morning and she says, can you talk? And so I just picked up the phone and didn't even call her on my landline. I wish I had because I couldn't hear very well on that darn cell phone. But I, I wasn't prepared for the story she was about to tell me of, of, of the bet ultimate betrayal in her marriage, mm -hmm. of her husband's double life and the dozens and dozens of women he had been with. I, I knew these people very well. I just, I didn't know. And I tried so hard to find the right words. Mm -hmm. We all want to find the right words to connect. Yes. And it isn't about words. It's not about my response. It's about my ability to dig deep and find my own sense of betrayal. Where have I been betrayed? And those feelings that it brings up so that I can be with her in that moment. And are we sharing our experience or how do you do it in a way that isn't taking away from what she's telling you in that heart open moment? Uh, she needs the full form. She really wasn't ready for my, she knows a little bit about my life. She knows a lot about my life. Some where I've been betrayed that she knows about and some where she doesn't. But in your mind, you're going but there. But I'm going there in my gut, in my heart. I'm like right there. I love that. I love that. The next characteristic you say is vulnerability. We have to be willing to, and this taps yes. into that story, open ourselves up even internally. That's the key to empathy. If you, if you look at empathy and shame on a continuum, Brooke, right? On, on one extreme is empathy, the other one is, is uh, shame. And then you've got vulnerability as that little marker, you know, that goes between the two, if you look at a soundboard. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So it, vulnerability is empathy at its best. And uh, vulnerability is, with shame, is shame at its worst. Mm. Because it's all about, if you really knew me, you may reject me. You know, you may deem me unlovable, broken. And it is, it's the worst of, of the worst, if you will. So vulnerability is really the key to be able to say kind of me too, whether it's literally or figuratively that you're saying me too. Didn't surprise me that compassion made your list. Compassion being that relationship of equal, right? I'm with you yes. on this plane. And last but not least, boundaries. How do boundaries yeah. play into this empathy? You know, it's so person? interesting about Renee's, Brene, excuse me, her research is that she found the most compassionate people were those who were the most boundaried. In other words, they were really clear about what they could do, what they can't do, right? Where they're willing to go and where they're willing to not go. And it was really empowering to hear that, that they're first compassionate of themselves 
and then they can be compassionate with somebody else. Mm -hmm. So they're willing to set those boundaries, and then they're also willing to hold people accountable without blame and shame. That's the key. I love that phrase, blame and shame. And you also yeah. often think of, I think, boundaries and compassion as kind of opposites, but they can coexist and, and beautifully. And they must. All right. Yeah. Liz, great perspective. Thank you so much. My pleasure.